So let's look at the libraries for statistical visualization. A subfield of visualization that focuses on representing data with plots. And often, so what we do here is, why do we do this? Because humans are very good at processing visual information. So let's make 2D plots. We have two dimensions which we can correlate there. And using color coding and stuff, we can even take more dimensions into account. And yes, they're often framed in terms of the grammar of graphics. I'm going to explain that when explaining ggplot in a moment. Okay. However, when looking at statistical plotting, there are still many libraries. And so in comparison to other stuff like pandas, the competition for best statistical visualization library is still going on. And all of these have their advantages and disadvantages. And well, in my opinion, uh, all of these libraries have clear use cases where they are the best. So for example, I really like, well, first of all, like how Seaborn looks, for example, and also like how easy it is to make, to create some plots. But if there's a plot where I don't, so after Googling, is there a Seaborn plot for this? And the answer is no, then it won't take Seaborn. So some have a very intuitive interface. Some can produce beautiful plots automatically by simply calling the dot plot method. Some have a nice interactive features, have nice interactive features, etc. So my recommendation, and what I also want to do in this lecture is to show you the most basic facts about these, like their names and some of the properties they have, such that if you have an unusual plot which you quickly want to do, you can Google the library and figure out is this possible in Seaborn or in ggplot and save hours and hours of pain trying to do the same mud project. Rüdiger's original um, recommendation was to look at one library in particular and learn this by heart. I don't think that's a good choice because I use Seaborn for some kind of plots and I use Altea for other kinds of plots. So the libraries I'm showing you here based on pandas in the sense that they make use of the fact that your data is already described and labeled. So you don't have to iterate over your data set, but you can simply take your data set and say data set plot yourself using this library. And that's a really nice feature because we take the um, fact the categories already as they are. So we saw that in Voyager 2. So it automatically extracts the from the columns the categories. And what I also can recommend is, for example, looking at this. So last week you learned a bit about tidy data. So this here is so-called tidy data, where you have um, so, so you have one row per observation, one column per variable. And normally this is not, you should have your data like this. So and there are good reasons to have your data like this. Um, but you could also have your data like this here, um, where you have, um, how, do you, how is it stated here? One row per value of one of the first variables and one column per value of the second variable. Okay, one of the first variable. So, these can be converted into each other using melting or pivot tables, respectively. Um, but the plotting libraries we're seeing, for example, so this year, like I said, um, it's only a few days ago that uh, Plotly started accepting also this form of data. And now Plotly can be simply called from pandas, which is really nice using pandas.plot. Um, so they make use of they, them knowing how your data is specified in pandas. Okay, and where the first library for plotting you've already seen, and that's pandas plotting. So simply calling dot plot on a pandas data frame. Philip told that to you already. You've seen that. So pros, no new dependency, it's quick and easy. Pandas uh, plots can be customized with modplotlib. We've seen that already too. They have official support by Pandas, and Pandas is a huge community, so that's really nice and they're extensible. We can afterwards so work on these with Matplotlib and other libraries. However, they have limited capabilities and they don't look great by default. And by saying that, I mean they don't look great by default because they are Matplotlib plots, and I don't think Matplotlib plots are pretty by default. C1 plots are pretty by default. Altair plots are pretty by default. Okay, next up, plot 9. Plot9 is, is a Python implementation of the famous ggplot2 package from R. 
So ggplot2 has been the de facto standard for plotting in R, and because most scientific computing in the past was done in R, this is how plotting was done. And having this port is really nice for people coming from, for example, R, and coming from other libraries where you're doing statistical and scientific computing. So Prius it's already standard in R, and the grammar is kind of nice once you get used to it, because you can simply, as I've showed you in the first video, you can simply say, well, and I also want this statistics, and please also make a violent plot from that data, and that's really nice. Um, because ggplot, or plot9, um, bases on matplotlib again, it's customizable with matplotlib. Um, it looks kind of nice by default, and users used to are like it. However, it has limited support because there's only one developer that ported this library from R and thus changes are really slow. It's not completely bug-free. The interface is really not Pythonic. The interface is R style. There's no wide adoption yet and users used to Python often hate it because, like I said, it's not native syntax to Python. We're going to see that in a second. There's Seaborn, which is a high-level plotting package built on matplotlib. I really like Seaborn, well, first of all, it's a pure Python, a real Python package. It's very powerful features. It's customizable with matplotlib again. It has a great look by default, I think. It has good support, wide adoption, and you can make some plots really, really clicky by simply calling one function. However, it only has elements of a grammar, so we're going to explain the graphics of how grammars are supposed to look in a second, and Seaborn only takes some of these features and doesn't use all of them, so you can't do everything that easily in Seaborn. So it's not so easily composable and non-default plots can get messy and you... So if there's no predefined plot for something in Seaborn, probably don't want to use Seaborn. So this is at least what I do. So if I Google, can Seaborn do this? And the answer is no, I know I'm not using Seaborn for this kind of plot. Altea, the new kit on the block developed by Jake Vanderplas, and Altair is the one that translates Python into this Vega Lite specifications, which we've seen already here when we're exporting, for example, um, the Voyager code. So this Voyager code is basically um, an online um, Vega Lite grammar. And Altair basically produces this Vega Lite grammar of how to tell plots, how to make plots, which are then rendered using JavaScript. By simply, so in Altair, you simply create this in Python. So you create JavaScript code that creates plots in Python. But this adds first-class support for web graphics and this exciting Vega Lite grammar, which is really nice. And it might and hopefully becomes the standard for statistical visualization because Altair is really nice to see. Altair is also a real Python package. It has a composable grammar, much like the ggplot grammar, but Pythonic in contrast to ggplot or plot9. It's very active support, great look by default, really great. It has a grammar for interaction, and it's the only one that really does that nicely, in my opinion. And it targets the web, so you can automatically make HTML plots, um, HTML renders from your plots. You can unfortunately, however, not customize it with matplotlib. There's no wide adoption yet, but it, it's really coming, and you can't export it to other formats yet. Even though I haven't looked it up since last year, maybe you can by now, it's under active development. Okay, there's Plotly, an interactive open source browser-based graphic library for Python. So that also automatically creates JavaScript plots from Python commands, which don't follow the Vega Lite specification, um, but are also really nice to have exported there in that way. And even the simplest plots are interactive by simply calling plot, it's interactive and exported to the web. It makes automatic HTMLs, which you can export. It can replace matplotlib in some cases, so it doesn't build on top of matplotlib. It has very active support as well. Great support for Jupyter Lab. Um, so there are multiple lab extensions which make it really nice, and it also targets the web. However, again, it's not customizable with matplotlib. It's targeted toward enterprises in the sense that they constantly want to sell you their dashboard and stuff. And so normally it, um, you have to explicitly tell I want this plot to be offline and not automatically uploaded to my account, which I don't have because I don't want to make an account with you. But whatever, and not pre-implemented plots are kind of impossible. So again, Plotly is something really nice for the plots it has, and it has quite a few plots, um, as it shows you, for example, here on this website, which we're going to see in a second. 
Um, but if you want to do something else in these plots, don't. Just don't. And then there are Jupyter widgets, which are not a plotting library, but simply add interactive elements like sliders, etc. to your Jupyter files, such that you can make your plots interactive. They look great in Jupyter notebooks, but they are not possible in Python scripts and also not possible in printed PDFs. So you can't use them in your thesis. Unfortunately, I really am, really want to make the case that even bachelor thesis are something that should not have a standard term or a printed PDF that's so 19th and 20th century. So why don't we make Jupyter notebooks the new standard for data science focused bachelor thesis? But yeah. Especially if you want to show stuff to your boss or to your supervisor or whatever, having these kind of interactive stuff is really nice, even though when printing it, it doesn't look nice.